Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on in. Come on in. Welcome to PWLM Wednesday night Bible study. I'm Bishop James Manigal. So excited to have you on with us tonight. We're getting ready to get started. We're going to continue our series on discernment, being aware of false teachers. We're going to be talking about material gain. Come on, like, share this video. We'll get started in about one minute. Come on, let me know you're in the room. Praise the Lord, Brother Mark. Praise the Lord, Sister Emerald. Amen. Praise the Lord, Sister Pam. Come on, welcome. It's our Wednesday night Bible study. So excited to have you on. Bishop James Manigal coming to you live. Man, listen, we're going to have a great, wonderful time tonight. We're going to dive right into the word. Wherever you are, hallelujah, however you're watching, let's take a moment just to worship the Lord in prayer. And then we'll be diving right into our text. want to say thank you to all of those that are watching, to all of our viewers that are faithfully coming on to our Bible study. I pray that you're learning something. That is the desire for our Bible study was called nothing but the truth for a reason. We desire the truth of the word of God more than anything else. Hallelujah. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord God. We thank you for this opportunity to come together, God, in the spirit of unity. You said in James, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who grants unto man liberally and unbraideth not. We need your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding. We need God, your word. For you said your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Light the way that we may walk circumspectly according to your word. You said know them that labor among you. You said, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit by the spirit and see if it be of God. We realize that there are many false teachers that have gone into the world. Help us, Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit, not to be deceived as we study to show ourselves approved unto you. You declare a work may need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Get into the word tonight. Transform the word. You said the letter killeth, but the spirit maketh alive. We thank you for what you're doing and what you're going to continue to do. As we enter into this Bible study, our prayer, God, is healing will take place. Deliverance will take place. God, manifest your glory. God, even right now, let somebody, God, be free of whatever God they're facing in life to know that you are the God, you are our Father, and you hear us. And we will forever be mindful to give you the glory and the honor and the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, just give him a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord, Sister Danielle. And Brother Charles. Amen. Amen. So glad to have you on again tonight. Um, we have been in the series of dealing with discernment. And um, I'm also going to cover tonight. Uh, the Feast of Trumpets. For those that know, we do um, keep the Holy Days. We celebrate the Holy Days. 
We'll be talking just a little bit tonight about the Feast of Trumpets. I'm going into um, that September 25th at sundown, going into September 26th. Typically, people keep it about 48 hours. Um, and the significance of the Feast of Trumpets. Um, why the Bible says it's a day that we come away from our labors. Uh, you know, we come off of our jobs. Many times we take vacations for different things. But the reason why there's no work to be done. We'll be talking about all of that stuff. But let's get into the word tonight. And then we'll be diving again, like I said, into the Feast of Trumpets. So we've been in the series of discernment, being aware of false teachers. How to spot, uh, how to detect, how to know that. Uh, false teachers are among you. The first thing that we learned is that we have to understand that the Bible is true, that the word of God declares that there are false teachers. If not, you'll think that everybody, um, you know, that says Jesus is of Christ. And we also understood, according to the word, that just because people say Jesus does not mean that they are of Christ, that the scripture that people typically use out of context um are people named. So it alludes to the fact that you have so many believers now, um, you know, in the worldly factor. And I said this again last week that there is a difference between the church, amen, and the church world. I'm going to say that again. There is a difference between the church and the church world. All right. The, yeah, there is a church world and uh, it's just a play on words, but a worldly church. Amen. Um, so let's dive into the word tonight. Praise God. So again, as we continue the series on discernment, being aware of false teachers and how to spot them, we will be dealing with a servant being worthy of his hire and a desire for material gain. Two different total concepts, but I kind of want to bring some revelation because the reality is you have Many that are being cultivated to desire material gain, but not understanding why God wants to be king first. The devil comes to offer money, comes to offer things. And we're going to be diving into some scriptures that's going to help bring some revelation or some understanding. Because literally, as I as I grow in the word and as I uh, walk this this earth, I'm finding that there are many people that use things out of context, you know, and like I said, a servant being worthy of his hire, uh, you know, people charge astronomical fees for conferences and, and different things, not saying that we shouldn't have to pay a fee, listen to what I'm saying, but, you know, all right, I want you to come to my meeting, and in order to be a part of my meeting, um, you're going to have to pay uh, $3,500, all right. And then they say a servant is worthy of his hire. So let's get some understanding of what that means and what it looks like according to the word of God. All right. So we will be dealing again with a servant is worthy of his hire. First Timothy chapter five and verse 18 and Luke chapter 10 and verse seven. All right. Luke chapter 10 and verse seven. And these are very, very important scriptures. Um, because they're going to bring insight and the desire, again, for material gain and the knowledge and the difference of this. And why is this so important to believers? Because many preachers have been labeled money hungry. All right. Many preachers because of a few people that love money. And notice what the scripture teaches for the love of money. Amen. For the love of money is the root of all evil. So it's not merely possessing, but the love, which means to get it at any cost. All right. To get it at any cost. And so first Timothy chapter five, verse 18. Let's get some understanding. Again, 1 Timothy chapter 5, it's after Thessalonians. All right, and I'm just getting it in both of my Bibles here, so give me one second. I want us to be able to just break this down really good, all right? 
We're going to take our time, teach a little bit, then we'll move on. All right, so 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5, all right? Verse 18, and we're going to be dealing with understanding this. All right, so first of all, um, we see the instructions. And this is instructions after the qualifications that Paul writes unto Timothy and the, a, the warning of apostasy and the desire or the warning to be an example. And then he goes over into instructions, all right? He goes over into instructions and he begins to teach. And so in five, and we're going to go down, even though 18 is our, all right, verse 17, watch this. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine, all right? For the scripture saith, verse 18, thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. All right? And the laborer is worthy of his reward. Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. Now, in the New Living Translation, this is what it reads. All right? Elders who do their work, well should be respected and paid well, especially those who work hard at both preaching and teaching. For the scripture says, you must not muzzle an ox to keep it from eating as it treads out the grain. And in another place, those who work deserve their pay, all right? So, um, just want to kind of break this down a little bit. Amen. So we see the Apostle Paul writing to Timothy. And there's a reason why he's writing um, to Timothy in this fashion. Again, he warned of apostasy. And in that day, unfortunately, just like today, we had they had people that desired money. They desired um, gain. They desired uh, wealth. Um, not everybody that came into the body of Christ uh, to do the work of Christ or to do the work of God, um, you know, was there to do it for the right reason. Sometimes in cultivation of how we're cultivated, this is why I believe that there has to be explanation, especially to the generations that are coming behind us. Because sometimes we see stuff, all right, and we don't understand, all right, because We've got many that have gone out into the world. The Bible says, again, this is why we have to beware of false prophets or false deceivers. And such was the case in the book of Acts, praise God, in chapter 8, verse 9 through 25. I'm not going to read it all, but understand Simon the sorcerer. Um, and I say that because we live in a day and an age, people see the miracles. They see the gifts. But just like Simon... The Bible said he had bewitched the city with much sorcery to, and they all gave him heed to least to the, to the least to the greatest. They, they, they looked at him as some great power of God. Praise the Lord, Sister Nee. Um, they looked at him as some power, great power of God. And so when he saw the apostles, when he saw the apostles coming out and how they begin to pray and move by the spirit of God and the gift that they begin to operate in the power of the Holy Ghost, he offered them money, all right? He himself believed first, but then when he saw it, he said, man, look, let me give some money that I, whoever I lay my hands on too might receive the gift, all right? Um, and it is not uncommon. What we find in today's society, I remember growing up uh, under the House of Prayer Church of Deliverance, watching Bishop Eric Reynolds and some of the younger ministers that did not understand would see Bishop Reynolds drive his Mercedes, or they would see him, you know, go to and live in his nice house. Um, but rarely do we see what it took the person to get there. Sometimes all we see is the now. We see what they got. And so we immediately attach our desire to the outcome, but not the process. 
All right, that's that's big. Pay attention to the process because if you really knew sometimes what it took to get to that place, the process of what it took to get that stuff, sometimes we'd be like, nope, I'll pass. But because we we pay more attention to the outcome or the stuff, we don't necessarily, oh man, look, man, I want a man what you got. I'll take that and this, all right? And that's 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 big, right? I, I remember watching um Bishop T D Jakes and this man, you know, came up and he said, Man, uh I want, you know, a, a, a double portion anointing of what you got. And so Bishop Jakes starts preaching. And, and I'm not teaching about whether Bishop Jakes is right or wrong. Just pay attention. All right. So Bishop Jakes starts teaching. And what he says, he starts to pray for the man. And he says, okay, I pray that you would lose your mother at an early age. And I pray that your stuff would be taken from you. And I pray that people will begin to talk about you and, and they will begin to ridicule you and, and they will begin to do all of these things against you. And the man said, wait, wait, wait. He said, what are you saying? What are you trying to do to me? And he said, wait. He said, you wanted the anointing that is on my life. He said, and it is the process that got me to where I am. Hallelujah. Are you sure you're ready to handle the process? All right. The Bible says no man intending to build does not first stop and count the cost. So we pay more attention to the outcome than we do the process. Man, I want to be like Juanita Biden. Man, I want to have uh, uh, Noel Jones's voice to preach. Man, I want to, you know, have uh, uh, Bishop T.D. Jake's ministry and how he does. Man, I want to have this and I want to have that. But you don't know the process or the price that was paid to get there. All right. And so literally, these false teachers, such was again Simon, the sorcerer, just give me money for it. All right. So the tendency is very apparent in the modern world where some faith healing televangelists and prosperity preachers and different ones not just them, I'm talking about some that are real fake, false, have come up and, and what they begin to do is create things to charge God's people for, all right? So I want to go to Luke chapter 10 first before I move further because, man, I'm itching at the bite and I want to, I really want to dive into some things, but I, I want to take my time, all right? So Luke chapter 10, our focal vo point is going to be verse 7, but before we get there, we're going to read something. All right, so Luke chapter 10. Hallelujah. All right, Luke chapter 10. They can hear you. All right, Luke chapter 10, verse 7. All right. And in the same house... Remain it. And this is Jesus speaking unto them, to the disciples. All right. And in the same house, remain eating and drinking such things as they give for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house. Pay attention. I need to give man. I feel like shout. All right. Go not from house to house. But what does that mean? We're going to get some understanding to this. All right. So Luke chapter 10, verse 7 in the New Living Translation. Don't move around. All right. I'm sorry. Let me let me back up. All right. Verse 7. Don't move around from home to home. Stay in one place eating and drinking what they will provide. Don't hesitate to accept hospitality because those who work deserve their pay. All right. Now, if you do the research on this scripture, what the apostle was saying is be content with what they are willing to bless you with. In other words, he said, listen, don't you, because this is what we've been taught to do. Well, you know, I'll accept that engagement over there because they're going to pay more. Then why are you ministering? 
Are you really preaching because you, you're doing the work of Christ? Are you preaching for gain? Amen. So the apostle says, he says, look, if they're treating you well and, and, and not according to what you declare is your standards, because I've heard some stories. My Lord have mercy. I thank God that I've never really encountered it. And God forbid that I do. Because if I encounter it, I'm telling you right now, I am going to deal with it. Um, but I've heard of preachers that come in, you know, and, you know, I don't, I don't stay in nothing but, you know, the upper class hotels. I don't, I got to have, you know, uh, if you're going to buy me anything, it's got to be Louis Vuitton or Gucci. It's got to be this or that. It's got to be this. And so they tax the people. They put a price on the gospel of Jesus Christ, all right? And they utilize the scripture. Again, a servant is worthy of his hire. But listen to what Jesus just said. Do not go from house to house. In other words, he said, don't you go from this place to that place and be like, well, you know, they don't serve too much over there, so I'm not going to go preach. Again, why are you doing it? So this are some of the marks of immaturity and false doctrine or false teaching or false teachers. This is what happens because of, because of misinterpretation of scripture. And you got some people that I don't believe are, are sent by God, but have been, uh, you know, either bought out by Satan. Same thing that he tried to do in Matthew chapter four with Jesus. If you'll bow down and worship me, he showed him the kingdoms and all the wealth and all the riches and said, if you'll bow down and worship me, I'll give you, I'll give, just bow down. That's it. And so we have, again, the church and the church world. That's right. I ain't got there yet, but thank you, Sister Emerald. What is your motive? Because <laughs> that's going to be a part of the understanding. What is your motive behind what you do? We got praise and worship leaders. We got musicians. We got uh, preachers, people, folk. Well, I ain't traveling over there to do that. Listen to me. And this is no, what you call it to them in Atlanta. They were trying to take care of me very well. But when I went to Atlanta, I did not, I didn't let them play for my plane ticket. I didn't ask them to play for my car. I didn't want them to do that. I didn't want them, praise God, to pay for my hotel. I paid for my own way. Paul said, when I went there, when I came unto you, I did not want to be burdensome unto you. Some I'm telling you, listen, we need to like share this video because we have been misinformed. We got preachers and teachers all over, praise God, um, in even seasonal seasons. I thank God for my leader. Listen, I, I want to give a shout out. I thank God, hallelujah, for Bishop Faulkner um, because he has taught me, man, when we travel and we go, he don't ask the churches to pay for us. He pays his own way. He taught me, listen, you go and you do this. If they bless you, they bless you, X, Y, and Z. Um, even with Bishop Reynolds, um, I used to see him do the same. Now, if somebody comes and says, hey, we'll take care of you for this and that, amen. I, sometimes I'll let people do that. But I want to keep my posture pure. I want to keep my posture pure. Some of our postures have been diluted, convoluted, whatever you want to call it. It has been tainted. Our motives are impure. Well, you know, if I go to this place or go to that place, you know, I'm going to go preach because they're going to pay me some good money. That's a part of the church world. Jesus just said in Luke chapter 10, you can research it for yourself. Go look it up. I, I, I'm challenging you to look it up. He said, don't go from house to house. In other words, looking for the greater reward or the greater prize. Well, you know, I'm going over here to preach. I'm going over there to preach. I'm going over there to preach. All for the dollar and not for God's glory. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. I said it's going to get tight. I'm, I'm telling you, I pray 
I pray this gets out. I pray it goes viral. So, you know, I really want to impact and affect the next generation. That everybody, because the world, because of a few people, the world has looked at the body of Christ like we are robbers, we are thieves. Every preacher is labeled a money hunger, I mean, just whoremonger of money. We just want money. Well, you know, they just want money. They want money. When people saw me drive up in my, my car, praise the Lord, as I traveled from place to place when I first began, people were like, that's the speaker? He riding in an old car? Yes. Because I don't have to have everything new. I don't have to look like I have everything. You know, that is again a gesture of the world. All right. Praise the Lord. So let's, let's, let's keep moving. I don't want to get stuck. All right. So the tendency is very apparent in the modern world. We see it happening time after time after time. Whether uh, people are taking money, stand in this line. I'll sell, you know, this stuff for you. And, uh, 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 you know, uh, miracle such and such water or, you know, praise God or, you know, whatever the case may be. Whatever it is, they are selling it at a ridiculous rate. With false hopes and promises. Jesus said his blood, man. He said by his stripes are we healed. He didn't say by some fancy water in a bottle. <laughs> but people are diluted because we don't know no better. Oh, amen. Hey. And sometimes people hire actors to come and say, you know, I drunk this or I did this and I was healed. But you better pay attention to scripture. Amen. So, the same kind of greed motivated false prophecy in teaching in the early church. Let's go to 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 1 through 3. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 1 through 3. So we can get an understanding. Amen. I like that. Somebody type, make sure you keep your posture pure. Come on, make sure you keep your posture pure. You have to, and your posture is your position, your position toward God. Make sure you keep that pure. I, 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 I cherish my posture with God above everything else. And you have to be able, again, like I said last week, some people are in love with the idea of being in love with God, not actually being in love with him. Some people are, you know, in love with God, but then some people are in love with the idea. Some people are in love with the idea of ministry because of what it looks like in the church world. You know, you get all of this money, you get all of this stuff again, but people don't know the sacrifice. Man, I'm telling you right now, you want to be a pastor, I will help you. Now, I'm telling you right now, I'm t I, listen, to anyone that wants to be a pastor, you better make sure you are postured for the position because Christ will prepare you for the position because it ain't just getting up on Sabbath or Sunday and preaching a word. Most of the work of a pastor is out of the pulpit. Most of the work that we do is in phone calls, house visits, ministering door to door, talking to folk, giving up time. It's a lot. And people go, well, you know, I, I, I want to be a pastor because they see some flashy person. They see some flashy person with money and stuff. And they think that's ministry. They see someone traveling from this place to that place to this place to that place and they think that's ministry but don't know that everybody don't pay your plane ticket. Everybody don't pay your way. That sometimes you got to work and say, Father, you know, because I desire to go to this place to give them your word. I'll do what I need to do to get there. Not just Merely, well, you know, looking for a handout or 
fleecing the people of God. Shame, shame, shame. All right. Thank you, Jesus. So, I know, amen. Good Lord, Bishop. <laughs> Second Peter chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. In the King James Version, it says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies. Pay attention. Even denying the Lord that brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Verse 2, and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. So he said, watch, this is how you will know. Many will follow the ways of the false teachers. Don't nobody, you talk about, hey, you know, God is calling us to fast. No, I wouldn't go down to the church where they talking about, you know, they're going to give away money. That God wants everybody to be a millionaire. I want to go to the church where God is allowing me to do whatever I want to do. That's what people do. And so in verse 2, he says, And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil. Man, it has never been a time where the way of truth is evil spoken of. If we're trying to live righteous or holy according to the word of God, it's damnable. By the world church. All right. Amen. Verse three. And through covetousness shall they be, shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. My Lord have mercy. I'm going to say that again. Thank you, Jesus. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. In the New Living Translation, it reads this, but there were also false prophets in Israel, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will cleverly teach destructive heresies and even deny the master who brought them. In this way, they will be bring sudden destruction on themselves. Many will follow their evil teaching and shameful immorality. And because of these teachers, the way of truth will be slandered. That's what I was just talking about earlier. And because of these teachers, the way of truth will be slandered. Every preacher just want money. That's not true. All right. Verse three. In their greed, reading from the New Living Translation, they will make up clever lies to get hold of your money. But God condemned them long ago and their destruction will not be delayed. Verse three again, in their greed, they will make up clever lies to get hold of your money. But God condemned them long ago and their destruction will, will not be delayed. So Paul defended in this his apostleship when he was writing to Timothy first, um, before second Peter, when we were talking about in 1 Timothy, he defended his apostleship. He said, listen, and I taught this last week. He said, we're not like many of those that are peddling the gospel for gain. He said, we came in as men of sincerity. Um, Paul said, listen, with Timothy, he said, when you go, be a man of sincerity. Don't just go um, peddle the gospel for gain. Don't go and, and do these things for gain. Don't go sing and play for gain. You know, well, you know, I only play and preach and do that. And, you know, if I get paid this much. And that's what people do. That's what we're taught. And again, then we hear the scripture, a servant is worthy of his hire. But we forget what Jesus said. Again, Jesus spoke to him and said, do not go from house to house seeking gain. Amen. Thank you, Minister Ursel. That's right. Do not go from house to house seeking gain. Don't go around preaching so you can get money and, and all of that. All right. Again, he said that he spoke in Christ. Second Corinthians chapter two, verse 17. Just write it down. So the same type of charge appears in the pastoral epistles. 
All right. In first Timothy chapter six and verse four through five, from these come constant disagreement among people whose minds are depraved. Again, um, first Timothy chapter six, verse four through five. From these come constant disagreement among people whose minds are depraved and deprived of the truth, whose imagine, whose imagine that godliness is a way to material gain. That's their imagine, that godliness, the way, I mean, Lord have mercy, is a way to material gain. And I mean, just the mindset. So, Again, it's not to say that we cannot live for Christ and be blessed. But he said, don't make the love of money. Because that's the issue. For the love of money is the root of all evil, right? For the love, that is the desire to get it at any cost. That is the root of all evil, the craving. The, I mean, you know, we're not praying and asking God where to go. We just want the money. So he says, again, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 4 through 5, in the New Living Translation, anyone who teaches something different is arrogant and lacks understanding. Such a person has an unhealthy desire to quibble over the meaning of words. Because we talked about, even last week, how there are... You know, when we minister the word of God, when we're preaching the word of God, it should be unto edification. All right. Not merely, you know, because there are, are people that are just asking questions. But the reason that they're asking questions is not for the sake of truth. It's to make you cast doubt and go after again, because this is unto godliness. What we do should be unto godliness. And you heard me say it last week. Getting a tattoo does not deal with godliness. So why is that your focal point? Getting an earring is not making us more godly. So why is that a focal point? Having a Benz or a uh, some type of materialistic thing is not a way to gain godliness. So why is that our focal point? So they cast doubt and make people think, and this is why the generation... Focus is on materialistic things. Yet the scripture says, set your affections on the things above and not on the earth beneath. He says, set your desires, your passions on godly things, on spiritual things, not just merely on materialistic things. All right. So. He says in verse five, uh, I'm sorry, it leading up to verse five, this stirs up arguments ending in jealousy, division. When he's talking about the quibble over meaning of words, it stirs up arguments ending in jealousy, division, slander, and evil suspicions. These people always cause trouble. Verse five, their minds are corrupt. Again, the enemy comes to corrupt the mind. You better protect your mind from being corrupted. And they have turned their backs on the truth. To them, a show of godliness is just a way to become wealthy. A show, a display of godliness is just a way. This is scripture. To become wealthy. I was reading today, you know, and thank God. I'm, again, I've never run into this myself personally. But, you know, a person of God that is charging people to come to a prayer conference where they're going to teach on prayer. And they, I think they're charging somewhere around $1,900. All right. Per person. That's per person. I think it's a two day conference or three day conference or something like that. But they charge $1,900 a person per person for them to come teach people about prayer. Let me get this right. Luke 11 and 1 says the disciples asked Jesus about prayer. Greatest person ever to expound about it and teach about it. And Jesus didn't turn around and say, all right, before I teach y'all, everybody go get me five sheep and three camels. I mean, we act like, you know, and then again, 
the scripture that people use is a servant is worthy of his height. I don't care what I mean, praise God, what you may have in you. Why are we that gullible <laughs> that we would be so willing? And I'm telling you, I know the place is going to be packed out because I know the person. I just didn't call him by name. The place is going to be jam-packed because people follow people, not God. People follow people, not the word. And that is the issue. That is the problem. So we're looking at this and it's real, right? So false teachers, write this down. False teachers are identified by their motive. False teachers are identified by their motive. Remember, the Bible says, and you will know them by their fruits. So false teachers are identified by their motive. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, again, Paul deals with the motive behind the false teacher's ministry. It is not to glorify God or to build the kingdom of heaven. In simple terms, it is about profit. It is about gain. It is about money. And that is it. So they imagine that godliness is a mean of gains. All right. So what does Paul mean by profit? Two things. One, two things. One, false teachers are preoccupied with financial profit. In other words, their, their desire, their attention, their focus is financial wealth and prosperity or gain. They don't care nothing about the people. And we got enough. I'm telling you, if you are a part of our ministry and I find out that you are fleecing God's people for financial gain or wealth, Lord have mercy upon you. Because I won't tolerate. No, we're not going to do that. That is why so many people don't want to serve God because they look. I mean, the devil has enough stones to throw at us without us giving him stuff. Well, you know, enemy, I think I'll, I'll give you another stone. I'm going, I'm going to do this. So they, <laughs> false teachers are preoccupied with financial profit. In John chapter 10, verse 11 through 13. John chapter 10, verse 11 through 13. Christ said that when the wolf comes, the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep, but the hireling just runs away. All right. Many false teachers focus exclusively on making money. The good shepherd will lay down his life. The hireling says, well, amen. No, if you, now, if, listen, and if this is you, maybe I'm running over your toes. Maybe that was your thought, your mentality. That was your mindset because it's been cultivated that way. It's never too late to repent. Turn away from that stuff. God, forgive me. Help me to be honest about what I do for you. Help me to do it for you and not for the gain of wealth. Repent and turn away from so that God can bless you. So, again, two things we point out that Paul meant by profit. Again, false teachers are preoccupied with financial profit. And in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 15, he said, by forsaking the right path, they have gone astray because they followed the way of Balaam, son of Boser, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. They minister in order to receive pay. All right. Talking about Balaam, the son of Boser, B-O-S-O-R. They, they forsook the right path. Because there were priest sons that came up in the house of God and they begin to love money and they begin to love women and they begin to love people 
more than they love God. So they begin to abuse their office. Be careful abusing the office or the gift that God has given you. You will be judged and held accountable. That's why I would rather repent now than to stand before the Father and he say, depart from me, you who practice iniquity. I don't know you. I ain't got time to repent then. So when you hear his voice and he pricks your heart, let's change. Right? Let's change. So, number two, false teachers are preoccupied with personal profit or self-help. So false teachers, one, are preoccupied with financial profit. Two, false teachers are preoccupied with personal profit or self-help. Though financial gain seems to be primarily what Paul refers to by profit, considering that he moves to the dangers of loving money in the next section, 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 6 through 10, these teachers also might be focused on personal profit in general. In these ministries, God is sought not for his face, but for his hand. And it becomes literally a way of life because not only do they embrace it, but they teach it to the people and we begin to embrace their teaching. Why do you pray? Why do you forgive? Why do you follow God's word? Some of us are only doing it because we, we want a blessing. Not because we want to please God. But we do what we do because we want a blessing. Well, God, I know if, 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 if I forgive them, you're going to bless me. No, God, I want to make you proud. Father, I want to make you proud. I don't want the, the stuff. I want, I want you to be glorified. So Paul begins to speak concerning these teachers. Again, 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 6 through 10. I'll read it from the New Living Translation. But watch this. Yet true godliness, because we talked about to them, a show of godliness is just a way of becoming wealthy. Verse 6. Yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. After all, <laughs> we brought nothing with us when we came into the world, in verse 7, and we cannot take anything with us when we leave it. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. Verse 9, but people who long to be rich fall into the temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. Verse 10. For the love of money. The desire to get it above all else is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. So he even speaks and the apostle Paul says, listen. He says, be careful. He says, because, you know, it should not be just us looking for the gain or the pat on the back or the things of the world. But what is our motive for why we do what we do? What is our motive? Amen. I'm almost done. So in these ministries, God is sought not for again his face, but for his hand. They are consumed with the blessings of God instead of the glory of God. Are you consumed with the blessings over the glory? Are you consumed with the blessings over the glory of God? That's the question. And that's something that we can all ask ourselves. What is our motive? Is my motive the blessings or is it his glory? God, I do what I do that you may be glorified. Go see your mom. 
I'll deal with you later. So that God may be glorified. And this is the thing. This is the thing. God is saying to us, again, what is our desire? Listen, are we being cultivated to look for the blessings over God's glory? I, 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 I help that person out, God. I help them out, but for why? Why? I traveled that distance to go do that. I, I did this and I did that. But for why? What, what was the motive? And, and we just have to be wary. I'm telling you right now, be on your watch. Because the church world that has infected the body of Christ, the church world that has infected the body of Christ has literally made us to the point where it's more about the blessing than it is about God's glory. Listen, do personal inventory. Man, there were times I had to check myself and I had to literally say, Father, why am I praying? Why am I fasting? Why am I seeking? Am I doing it for this reason or am I doing it for the glory of God to be revealed? I had to seek God. I had to rebuke myself because of how my flesh was being cultivated by the society, the church world that has affected the church. Our children watch these entertainers. Come on. They watch these entertainers. They show, they, you know, they watch all of these uh, supposedly gospel artists and they see nothing but stuff. They, oh, God is about this. And, you know, you serve God, you'll get this. And you serve God, you'll get that. But rarely, look, 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 let, I'm going to show you something. Any good person that's real about what they're teaching will always make sure it deals with salvation, holiness, edification of the body, Jesus. It's going to line back up with that. But it ain't going to point just to stuff. And that is the reality. Everything is being pointed to stuff. You know, uh, come save, get this and get that. And our children... Our children are being brainwashed. You know why they don't want to serve the God you serve? Because they keep looking at these entertainers that keep telling them, if you broke, that ain't God. Yet, there are times God said, don't take nothing. So now they're saying, well, I don't want to serve the God of my mom and dad because that God just, you know, he don't got stuff. And don't understand that the Bible says, why? Why built up on earth treasures where moth and rust doth corrupt? Not that we cannot have, but that should not be your chief desire. Stuff, 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 And everything leads to it. That's why I thank God. Listen, I've been delivered from Christmas. Maybe you serve, you know, and celebrate Christmas and that's fine, ain't? If that's your your thing, I just know I've been delivered because not only is it paganistic, but there's a lot of stuff that is rooted in it. Kids only think about gifts they going to get. Oh, I can't wait because I know I'm going to get this and I'm going to get that. I'm going to get selfishness. It breeds selfishness. It does. My goodness, have mercy. I mean, it breeds self. All they want is stuff. Stuff, 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 stuff. And then we wonder why. Why? 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 I mean, they're not sad. You buy them one expensive item, they want two or three. And all we do is cater to that thing. And it, it only feeds the spirit. And now they don't want to serve God because God ain't going to get me stuff. Because Jesus is about stuff. No, he's not. We got to teach them the word. Give them the word so that they can understand 
Amen. Hallelujah. Say we're going to cut some things today. So. The Bible becomes a self-help book. And people listen to these teacher sermons so that they can gain things instead of knowing God and building his kingdom. This was not Christ's focus in teaching. He told all that if they would follow him, they must hate their father, mother, wife, children, brother, sister, and even their own life. And then they had to take up their cross and follow him. Come on. And that is the truth. We don't preach that gospel. That ain't a gospel that we love to preach. That if any man comes, he has to first hate these things first. And when he utilizes that word hate, he's not talking about hate as in the sense of, you know, I just hate y'all with the disdain and the disgust. He's saying that above that, that you got to want me above these things. You got to say, no, listen, if it came, if it came down between me staying saved or following my wife out of Christ, I love my wife, but she got to go. And she, I believe she would do the same for me. Prayer, listen, I'm not going to follow you out of God. Go on your own, do what you want to do. I mean, literally. And he said it for a reason. We got to love God above because again, and I heard Minister Jamal minister on this past Sabbath on some of the stuff similarly. And the reality is parents will allow their children to move them right out of Christ. Well, you know, I'm just taking care of my kids. And... No, you're supposed to be training them. How are they training you? How are they telling you and teaching you where to go and what to do? And so now we follow folk and stuff. Versus following God. All right. <laughs> Amen. So people from ministries that focus on personal profit typically have shallow faith. They are unprepared for the trials of life and often become angry at God when they come. And many ultimately fall away from the faith like the false teachers they sit under. All right. Like Christ, Paul taught that all who wanted to be godly in this world would suffer. Second Timothy chapter three, verse 12. Second Timothy chapter three, verse 12. Let's read it. And I'll back up to verse 11. But watch Paul's charge to Timothy. I'll read from verse 10 to 12. But you, Timothy, certainly know what I teach and how I live and what my purpose in life is. You know my faith, my patience, my love, and my endurance. You know how much persecution and suffering I have endured. You know all about how I was persecuted in Antioch, Iconium, Lystra, but the Lord rescued me from all of it. 12, yes, and everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. I'm going to say it again. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10 through 12. Anybody that wants to live for Christ will suffer persecution. He said, anyone that wants to live godly. Now, if you don't want to live a godly life, of course people ain't going to talk about you. Amen. Of course they ain't going to ridicule you. You're doing the same thing I'm doing. You do, you, yeah, amen. Because we got, well, you know, I just don't understand. People ain't, you know, they don't talk about me or do that. Right. But Paul said it. Godly life. There is a difference. If you are trying to live a godly life, Ain't no way the world gonna want to be your friend. That's why they didn't like Jesus. When you're trying to live a godly life, even the church world won't like you. And you gotta understand that. 
That's why they can't stand you. I hear you, man. Oh, my prayer, God, I just don't understand. I'm nice as I can be. I do this and I do that. And I don't understand why they're just so mean or why they do this stuff to me. Because you're trying to live a godly life. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, family will abandon you. That's why Jesus said, uh, you know, that if you're going to come, you got to be willing to give up family, wife, husband, brother, sister. Because if not, they're going to pull you back. And that's what happens because we're not willing to give it up. All right. Amen. So. <laughs> he told Timothy. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3, to endure hard times as a good soldier of Christ. He taught him about rejoicing. So we have to be careful. I'm closing here and then we're going to get into the holy day. We have to be careful following false teachers. This is how you will know whether they are false. You will know them by their fruit. What is their motive? Are they all about money? Money, 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 money. But they never challenge you to live right. Never challenge you to live holy. Never challenge you to live righteous. Oh, they can tell you how to get wealth. They can't tell you how to live right. One of the biggest signs either of someone that is sold out or somebody that's false. Again, Satan's objective, and if you'll bow down, he took him to the, showed him the treasures of the earth, the wealth of the kingdoms, and said, if you will bow to me, I'll give this stuff to you. Just bow. Just bow. So in what ways have you seen ministers are ministries that focus on profit, financial, or personal goal. True teachers are not motivated by money. They're not motivated by profit. They're not motivated by stuff. They're motivated by seeing souls saved. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. So I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you again. Like, share the video. I want you to make sure that you are taking, uh, you know, take personal inventory. Why am I following Christ? Why did I take that engagement? Why did I do that? I didn't say it was anything wrong with making money, but it shouldn't be our primary focus, especially when it comes to God. Especially when it comes to God. That's why Jesus got so upset and said that they were making the house of God into a den of thieves. They were overcharging for the prices of the sacrifice. They were doing everything in the name of God. And Jesus went into his house and overturned the tables and overturned the thing and took off his belt and began to whip. Because he was so frustrated. What would he do in today's churches? What would he do with, with looking at how we conduct what we call business in his house? Father, help us to be different. Come on, somebody need, Father, help me to be different. Help me not to be that man or that woman that, that, that ministers for a price. The truth is, I get a lot of invitations in a lot of places, and they have what they call an honorarium. I have never set an honorarium for myself because I don't believe in preaching for money. Everywhere I go, they will tell you, I'll say whatever God lays on your heart for me to have, that's it. But I'm not going to tell you $600 and I'll come preach. Because now my motive has shifted. 
I'm not going to tell you that I could do it for this price because my modus has shifted. I will not be bought out. I've heard people say, well, you know, you got to understand a worthy, a servant is worthy of his hire. They've done all of those things. And I just showed you in scripture, Jesus said, do not go from house to house seeking material gain. What is the purpose of you? Good place to repent. Good place to ask God to help me to live and stay postured differently. All right. So quickly, 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 want to dive into this. You heard me say earlier that we are approaching the Feast of Trumpets, September 25th into the 26th. At sundown, September 25th, going into September 26th, again, we'll have the biblical uh, holy day, Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year, or the Feast of Trumpets. All right. What is the importance of this? Um, the Feast of Trumpets, the main thing that we look is that it teaches us Christ will visibly return to the earth. That's why in Thessalonians, it says, and at the last trump, at the sound, the last, the dead in Christ will rise. Christ is going to come at the last trumpet, the blowing. So for those that don't know, this is actually a true uh, theological teaching that they, they look at, nobody knows the day or the hour, but they know the season. So what they're saying is in the season of the Feast of Trumpets, that's when the Lord shall appear. This is why every, every Feast of Trumpets, before that time, people start preparing themselves. People that know the scripture. And they start, Father, let me cross every T, dot every I. Let me make sure, God, my confidence and my trust is in you. But I need to repent. I need to, to make sure that I'm living right. Because it may be just that season that the Lord shall return. It's during the Feast of Trumpets. So at that time, he will resurrect the saints who are no longer living and instantly change those saints who are still alive to immortal spirit beings. All right. The Bible says, watch, where do we find this as law given unto us in Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 23 through 25, Leviticus chapter 23. Verse 23 through 25. Again, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 23 through 25. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel saying, in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath rest. A memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it, and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. All right? That is Leviticus chapter 23, verse 23 through 25. All right, so... Times to blow the trumpets. Well, Joel chapter 2, verse 1 through 2. Then we'll go to times to blow the trumpets. Joel chapter 2, verse 1 through 2. Joel chapter 2, verse 1 through 2. Blow the trumpet in Zion. And sound an alarm in my holy mountain. And let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. For it is at hand. So one of the times to blow the trumpet was to rouse people to repentance. It was a sign of the coming of the Lord. But one was to rouse the people to repentance. They blew the trumpet. The time to repent. A time to prepare. Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord is coming for it is at hand. A day of darkness and gloominess. A day of clouds and thick darkness. 
like the morning clouds spread over the mountains. A people come great and strong, the like of whom has never been, nor will there ever be any such after them, even for many successive generations. So, biblically, trumpets were blown for a handful of occasions. One reason is to signify the beginning of a new month. To signify the beginning of a new month. To remember or hold a holy day, a memorial day. To remember or hold a memorial day. The beginning of a jubilee year. So they blew the trumpet at the beginning of the jubilee year. To gather all of God's people. That's why, again, the trumpet shall sound. To gather all his people. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 through 54. So the trumpet was blown to gather all of God's people. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 through 54. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound. The dead will be raised incorruptible. We shall be changed. For this a corruption. Corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. All right. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse 13 through 18. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. Least you sorrow as others having no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will not any means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself would descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse 13 through 18. Revelations chapter 11. Watch this. Revelations chapter 11, verse 15 through 19. Then the seventh angel sounded and there were loud voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. And the 24 elders who sat before God on their thrones fell down on their faces and worshiped God saying, we give thanks unto you, Lord of God Almighty, the one who is and was and who is to come because you have taken your great power and reign. The nations were angry and your wrath has come and the time of the dead and they should be judged, and that you should reward your servants, the prophets, and the saints, and those who fear your name, small and great, and should destroy those who destroy the earth. Then the temple of God was opened in heaven, and the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple. There were lightnings, noises, thunderings, and earthquakes, and great hail. All right? So, we find the importance of celebrating. I if 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 I knew the the season that Christ would return, would I not prepare? If I knew the time that Christ, and this is why, again, the Jews to this day celebrate. They take off from work because man, when Christ comes back, I don't want to be working. I don't want to be seen. If I'm working, I want to be out doing the Lord's will. I don't want to be working at my regular job. I don't want to be working and like, Lord, have mercy. I'm doing this or doing that. I want to make sure that when the Lord returns, I am ready. 
Hallelujah. So, again, we celebrate the Feast of Trumpets and we will be celebrating it. Not going to get into all of that. Um, again, to warn of impending danger, to rouse people to repentance, to corporate a new king of Israel. So it's blown to rouse them to repentance and will one day corporate the reigning king, Jesus, who will be accompanied by the sound of trumpets upon his return. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 14. Again, Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 14. So the question is, are you ready? Are you ready for the return of the king? Are you ready for the Lord to return? That is simple. Again, I state the fact that, you know, if we're preaching for gain, for money, and to do that, Christ told us not to. Just showed you in scripture. Even when he said, don't go from house to house. I didn't make it up. Just gave you the word. Sometimes we need, you know, what I found is this, and I'm closing. I now understand why he says we will be without excuse. Can you understand that the Lord is delaying his coming for our sakes? He has gave us time and time and time again to repent. Nobody will be able to say, Father, I didn't have time. In some aspects, I don't believe that the men of God got it wrong when they said, you know, we believe the Lord is coming back on this date. To some, I believe they had it right. I just believe that God delayed his coming. To give us opportunity to get it right. He loves us so much that he said, look, I'm telling you right now. Get your house in order. Be ready for my return. So he gives us mercy. So we are without excuse. We're without excuse. And the question is, will you be prepared? Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus. First of all, God, we thank you. We thank you for God, this word that has sharpened us. We thank you, Lord God, for this word that's given us insight, understanding, wisdom. Help us to walk in the newness of life. Not merely as the world church, but the church. We don't want to be the church world. We want to be that Christ-inspired church, that Christ-inspired word to live for you. Help us to change the opinions of some that look at the body and see us only as people that want money and not a people that loves their God. We thank you right now that you are clean, cleaning us up. Come on, you can ask them, clean my life, Lord. Help me to live for you, Jesus. If there's anything that's found unworthy, if there's anything that's found I should not be doing, help me, God, to, to get rid of that thing and to live for you. And we thank you. We thank you right now. Maybe, maybe you're not saved. Maybe you're in that that state and you're saying, I want to be saved, or maybe the word has pierced your heart and you're saying, hey, I want to live for Jesus. We have ministers that are watching now that are, that are on this, this platform that are looking for you. All you got to do is reach out and say, hey, I want to be saved. Maybe you want to be baptized. We can baptize you in the name of Jesus. So much, so much. The Bible says again, creation is waiting with anticipation for the manifestations of the sons of God to be revealed. You'll be revealed in this time. You'll be revealed. I love you. Love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. Listen, we have some things that are coming up. Um, praise the Lord. We 
will be this Saturday, praise the Lord, at Security Mall down on Woodlawn. We're going to be down there um, going into the mall to do our outreach. This is our fourth Sabbath, praise God, and we will be out of the building. We'll be doing outreach. If you would love to be a part of that, come out there with us, meet with us so that we can glorify the name of Jesus. I believe many are going to get saved. We did it last time. We witnessed to, to those that were coming in and out. And God changed some lives. So I'm telling you right now, you don't want to miss this. Come out in fellowship with us. Also, um, I believe that is October when we were down with Pastor Branch name. October 2nd. October 2nd. We will be with Pastor Branch um, and their ministry. Harvest World Ministries will be with them. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss that. If you would like more information, please text um, Sister Kina. Or reach out to our messenger if you would like to be a part of that. We're going to be traveling down to Dover um, to fellowship with them and to minister the word of God. God is doing something supernatural. For those that have been giving, I want to say thank you for your contributions and thank you for the things that you've been doing. Because, listen, we cannot do it without you. Getting ready to travel to London needs your support. If you would like to be a support to me, um, to help me to get to London, dollar sign James Manigault. Praise the Lord. Dollar sign James Manigault. They put it up there. My wife, I believe, put it up there. We're going to be going to preach the gospel to deliver the word. Um, God is doing some great things in this ministry. We don't want to do it without you. We have our men's uh, fellowship also that's coming up where we will be going out to Sandy Cove for the men's retreat. Hallelujah. If you would like to be a part of that, then you can go to our website. The information is on the website. I believe the women's fellowship is also getting ready for their uh, garage sale. You can reach out to Minister Rita um, for that information. God is doing some wonderful things. I'm telling you right now, you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. Again, this is Bishop James Manigal. I love you, love you, love you. Can't make me stop loving you. We look forward to fellowship and being with you next time. Amen. Let's worship. Make his face shine upon Be gracious to you Lord, turn his face toward you And give you peace The Lord bless you And keep you Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Come on, make sure you greet your brothers and sisters. Love you, love you, let's worship. Love you, love you, love you. Till next time.